Welcome to, and I don't know, can you see, uh, this is a new thing and you guys can let me know, but this is a, an effect that I was trying to make work. So excuse my delay, but is this, can you see it fine? Can you see what I've written here? And, Cause I have all these like graphics that TikTok puts in front of it. I just wanna see if this is an effective. So anybody with feedback on the, the 10 signs of could have been a relationship in the back would be cool to know. But welcome everybody. And anybody that has feedback on that, please let me know. Um, yes, you can see the bullet point list. Awesome. And, and hopefully it's, it's a little bit more clear for you. My head's out of the way. I, I don't, I like this effect. I think this is cool with that behind me and the, you know, you can't really see my office, but this thing on the front of the podium and like the mic in my face, it's kind of funny. So I'm, <laughs> I'm not sure, but it, this is the point, so you guys can follow along and look at this. Um, I'm gonna be going through each one of these points today, but I really would, um, I, I like to like, I call it like a, a creative classroom. I like to teach in some ways where people are, because I'm psychoanalytic, I like free association. So if something comes to mind, you know, maybe I'm not gonna address everything, but um, I can, I definitely like to see what is being stimulated or what is being, what you're associating to mentally or emotionally when, um, it's like you're, yeah, uh, when you are, um, when you're listening to this stuff, because I, I think that one of the things that happens with codependency is that it's this big meta term, but we're like fish in water. So many of us have some of this going on in our personalities and the way that we, uh, basically relate to others, relate to ourselves, relate to our feelings. Thank you for the likes, absolutely. And the follow, sweet. And yes, it does look like I'm presenting. I just would love to be able to change that, that little like name, obviously, to, to something that made any sense to me. But hey, we're, <laughs> we're just going for the presentation style. So, so again, so that was, that's what I was trying to say is like, so your associations, the reality of, of how I try to present in my feed and my videos, that's what I actually, what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to show you how codependency shows up in your family, between your children, between, um, between your spouse, um, between your boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever. I mean, as far as like dating is concerned. So all of this is so important to see it in action because again, it's so meta in its, its schema for us that um, we need these examples. So your associations are very much appreciated. Please type them in and say, yes, this reminds me of this. And that will help people, uh, you know, as well as myself, see um, that this is starting to kind of, again, we're trying to connect the dots. So we start to understand codependency in our own lives. So, I mean, because codependency, and I'll start with the first one, is like, because co codependency is a, a relational dynamic. One of the first things that happens is I have a hard time, and like you said, articulating my feelings or my emotions. There's something that has gone on in the time when we were kids, and I like to really explain this, like as little kids, we are balls of emotion. We are raw emotional cannonballs as soon as we come out, right? And all the experiences we have, let's say we start out as a square of emotion, start to kind of round us off. And one of the first things that rounds us off is shame. So we have anxiety actually first and then shame next. And shame and codependency, and shame starts at two years old when you're told no for the first time. And there's a really cool experiment with being told the word no um, and seeing what your response is to elicit you know, more understanding of where you were conditioned in this way. So, and you guys double check the screen if you like what I'm saying or you're listening closely, definitely send out those likes because then it will push us out a little bit further. Thank you. And then I think one of the, the 
yes, eat shame, huge shame is right. And if shame starts at two years old, and we never have an experience that helps us recognize it as, oh, that's a normal experience of wanting something, but then you can't have it. And, you know, being, have some amount of containment or explanation of what this feeling is and why you're having it. Instead, it's used to control you. <laughs> that's when you are going to start developing a difficult time. Thank you so much a difficult time articulating your feelings. That is the number one thing that stops us from saying that we've ever made a mistake, that we're ever in conflict with something. Oh, we don't wanna cause a problem. Oh, I'm too ashamed about the mistake I made. So thank you so much. I appreciate that. You have a great day too. Um, and be back. The, but the, I think that that's the, that is where codependency starts. It actually starts that early. And why I think so many of us struggle with this is that we end up, if we can't articulate our feelings, folks, what we end up doing is coming up with defense mechanisms to keep them down, to keep them repressed. Now, I'm going to throw this out there to everybody because I want you to let me know, does this resonate when I say, and what your experience is as adults even, you know, even as children, I don't know if you can go back that far, but I mean, as far as uh, remembering how you created defenses is pretty much impossible, but we, we end up what I call with a, a self and then a fortress we build around it to protect all of these vulnerabilities we never worked through. And codependency is a way to kind of keep ourselves protected. So I'm, I'm put, kind of putting this out there now to you to see what you understand about what I was saying there. Oh, and I'm going to, I see now my parents were angry at me about things I could not control. Yes. Literally just, I just realized this is hindering my new relationship. Absolutely. Like bedwetting and yeah. Yeah, you know what, and that is, that is it, that is so important to recognize. That is something that a child, uh, children generally have no idea what it is that, that they're in store for, obviously, so everything is an opportunity. I mean, even if you laugh at a child for saying something funny and they didn't think it was going to be laughed at or funny, they will have like a almost i mean i as a therapist i've heard more stories that have lasted as like a trauma imprint as humiliation you know so all all of the these things that are happening with a child we are not necessarily understanding that they're having a different experience they're having an experience so and and being shamed for something that you can't control is a great way of, of shutting you down um, and, and basically what parents are doing when they do this is projecting their anger. They can't control it either. And that makes them angry instead of recognizing, well, none of this control stuff is actually even viable. Why don't we start with the reality of the situation and, and deal with it in a way that um, helps us all? Absolutely. Melrose, thank you for all the gifts too. And, um, and I will be coming on more regularly in the morning and the evenings, sometimes on Instagram. But, you know, and so that's, so again, if you like this, share this with people that you might think. And if somebody is speaking Spanish, and I love that, I wish that they would translate for some reason. Um, but let's go on to the next one is, is the, the next, now we kind of get into the defense mechanisms, right? And these can be um, ways of, again, protecting that originally disturbed, right? That shamed, that confused emotional experience that we have at a, at a very young age, which is people pleasing. So if we can just figure out how to control um, ourselves and learn about the other, we, we can kind of come up with this very interesting, uh, children are, are very resilient and smart. We come up with this way to say, oh, wow, I see that they like when I make a good grade or I clean up uh, their bedroom or I do this over there for them and they don't get mad at me. So, and same with our siblings, 
Same with our friends. We can just, in order to make everything good all the time and none of this out of control negative stuff, then you're definitely, <laughs> you're definitely gonna get to this place where you're going to be out of control of that because what really happens is that nobody can be pleased all the time. And this is something that really starts to make, now that's when codependency starts to really find a new edge. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, see what works and what doesn't work was a must, right? You had to test the waters, that's, and once you learn that, it becomes kind of a, a habit that you rely on to survive the situation that you rely on for safety. And that's why I say it's really interesting. Codependency is kind of, well, not kind of, it is adaptive psychologically and emotionally to handle different situations that feel threatening within your own home. Obviously, you, you, you know, being an orphan or being rejected or the idea, I mean, like what happens when you run away? You come right back, even if it's a very bad situation. So yes, and, and it is. I mean, that's why, that's what I was trying to say, uh, why not now, is it is a one-way street that people please, people please, people please, and then, oh my God, the person's not pleased because we really can't control them through this and it all comes crashing down and we become really upset. I mean, I say we because I've experienced this and, and definitely like the post if you can, Double tap the screen is how you do that. Um, and then I'll send that out. As far as, this is, cha this is a challenging tug. It really is. And, and I, that's why, you know, I've created a community for this because I actually don't think that even in, in therapy, we start working on a lot of individual aspects of things, but this is a big deal um, in, in, a, in a deep way for a lot of us. And... I don't think it's really touched on as such a, cause it's complicated, right? There's so many parts to it. And, um, and why is it co? Well, it, when we, co is like the prefix for us and other, it's we're coexisting. And it, we, we say codependent is uh, the opposite of interdependent, right? Or, or not, well, independent, but when we're talking about relationships, codependence means I lack a sense of self without pleasing you, without you being, um, you absolutely being uh, uh, happy with me, uh, sacrificing myself for your needs. I mean, we can go down the list. So all of these things, my self-esteem is basically... I mean, we can also put it down to this, is being, you know, your emotional uh, caregiver. So we call this, and, and we also, so there's two people that have to do this dance. It's not one. And the other person has to allow it. And they might also be codependent as well. So it's not interdependent. Interdependent is different. It is like, obviously, a healthy relationship is interdependent recognizing the other person as an equal, recognizing their differences, recognizes that it's okay for them to have differences and want to connect with them through those differences, uh, working together cooperatively, not being threatened by one another. These are all interdependent type of uh, qualities. And, and I wanna do a healthy, right, signs of interdependent relationships too, um, because I think that's going to be um, going to be part of the healing process is seeing the example of what a healthy relationship looks like. Um, so what I'm going to do is go on to in, in, do you have any other questions or any suggestions or any associations? Remember, free associations while we're talking is definitely good. So as I'm talking, if you're having thoughts and you type them in, you're doing the work. You're bringing to the table 
your associations which help you understand and connect the dots. If you type them down, it's helpful. I will say um, you don't necessarily have to, but I definitely think um, it's, it's helpful to reinforce the connection. Once you connect a dot, that's therapy is my, as far as I'm concerned, uh, but this isn't, right? Uh, I saw things in black and white and good and bad. That is, you know, I think um, this is where, and, and I'm gonna be careful with this because I, I, don't, I do not think narcissism and codependency are synonymous. I think there are places where there are crossovers or they touch because some people can have narcissistic qualities, um, but it's mostly underdeveloped um, aspects of themselves, not a whole personality complex. This kind of thinking is the same with codependency as in narcissism. That was my way of getting around saying that. Concrete thinking, meaning that it's simplified. It's, it's not that it's a bad word when I say narcissism. I, all children are narcissists. All children are little narcissists running around. Okay, they are not trying to hurt you. Don't take it personally either. This is a whole bunch, but they are just me, 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 me. They don't know, what, they don't understand that they are different, separate, that other people, you know, also are equal. They don't, that's not, they're gonna learn it through maturation. But kids are concrete thinkers. You tell them something, they believe it. They are black and white thinkers. And so that way of thinking is still at this level where it's not complicated or what I call sophisticated enough for adult relationships, right? We need to, what I call, that's a two-step thinking process, black, white. Yes, it exists, but it's overly simple. And it's so excluding of what we understand as adults as far as I'm concerned, when we really do understand so much more about a situation, if we just took two seconds to let in more information about the person that we're talking to or about, or the, the situation and all the influences. And what's cool is that when you do that, what we, I call it creating that third level of thinking, then you get out of that situation and then you can actually have a conversation with somebody. Because this back and forth, that's all you can do. And you're on the opposite sides. So thank you for that. The, um, what concert, uh, yeah, it's funny. Um, funny joke. Hey there, AK. I, and so I'm, I'm just reading the comments for a second. And I'm glad you guys are liking this uh, and staying on. The next thing is, so I think this is also, and I try to explain this kind of like as one leads to the next, right? Every, you want to please everyone, but if you can't, let's say, you want to fix them. The whole point still is to get everybody good, get everything right. Um, so definitely, um, I hope I see the hole I'm in hope to climb out. Yes, absolutely. And you're going to, the more you understand, the more you can actually use that understanding to start to climb out of this and evolve. I mean, I really think it's about emotional development. So this is the thing is that we spend, I think this is what's really kind of interesting about codependency is that we've studied the other so much that we can solve the, their problems for them. They don't want us to. And we, and then there's repercussions for that. They, they also get resentful. We get resentful if they don't use our advice or, you know, or, or they don't, if, or they continue to have the same problem, really not trying to understand the person, but understand the problem. And this is where, this is where we can't apply it to ourselves. This is where that, that, I can do for others what I can't do for myself. That's that's a codependent motto. And a lot of teachers tell me that, that I've worked with. Oh, wow, well, I can teach my uh, elementary school uh, student, you know, how to emotionally regulate and, and talk about their feelings effectively. But I go home and have a very difficult time doing the same for myself and my partner. You know, that 
that shift that we can play a role um, so effectively, but not be able to, to internalize it is the shift we have to make. Um, in, su in such a situation, not other relationships. I thought happiness started with, with a big H, but it actually starts with you. <laughs> yeah, I love that. I love that. And, you know, I, I remember, you know, being, I mean, I'm definitely not, I don't need a label a time in my life, but chasing happiness and being really concerned that, you know, I wasn't finding it in my 20s. Like, what's this? This is a real existential issue. Uh, I'm, I'm seeking happiness. I'm seeking happiness. But not in here. I was going to go find it. It was somewhere. It was in the, you know, and I did a lot of cool things looking for it. Don't get me wrong. Um, that, 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 that's, that's actually, that, that was the benefit of that type of, um, that time. But no, it's, it's not there. It's a sense of well-being within yourself. I love that. So yeah, that, that what we were saying, and, and can somebody say something before I move on from, you feel the need to fix others, how this works for you or doesn't work for you. I mean, meaning works for you. How, how does it play out in your life? I, I don't think it works. And I'll, as, as I'm waiting for somebody to say something about how they relate to this, I don't think it works in so many ways because we end up giving, this is a big one, so much of our energy, time, anxiety, worry, stress, you know, it, it, cause you can't do these things emotionally for other people without having actual physical repercussions yourself. And if they can't fix it and, and just feeling underappreciated, right? It, it never works. And, and so this is why I think, you know, yes, letting your partner fix themselves, but I still think in some ways, this is where interdependence comes in, is that they also need to know in what way you're having an issue, in what way they can open up. It's generally a softening of some sort of rigidity within your partner. Softening meaning relax it a little bit and consider how you feel when they act that way. Empathy, and then they can start to fix it within themselves. They've got to really want it. But your trigger when she's upset about something, that is yours to understand. And, and I think that that, I mean, and again, and a lot of people on my post say, oh, on the skits, yeah, but how do you fix it? I would love to erase that word from the codependent mind because there is no fixing it. There is understanding it, not needing it anymore because you understand it. And then you can come up with other ways of being in the world that it just, or within your relationship or within yourself that makes sense. And that doesn't look like, it's not like you had a, a broken thing and you were able to fix it. Now it looks like the old thing. It looks good again. It's all, you know, shined up. No, it stays and at that level that it's at. You understand it and you don't need to worry anymore. Worry has a function. It is a defense. Worrying about somebody having a problem or being upset is a defense against something that's coming up in you. So, do you have a Band-Aid because I, oh no, that's funny. Um, I don't have any spiders. So, hey James, self-abandoning to avoid conflict. This is a problem for me. Yeah, you know, I, I side note on this before we move on to, um, I think is the next one right here, you struggle to set clear boundaries um, in your life. We could just say you struggle to set clear boundaries um, when somebody has conflict. 
Seriously, you, you're, you're, you absolutely struggle to, you shut down. So self-abandoning, James, and I want you to clarify this for me, if it, if it works for you, is what specifically? Because I'm seeing it as, and again, as at least in my mind's eye, my association is <clears throat> shutting down moving away from feeling something as the conflict starts to pick up, as the person <clears throat> or not doing what you want. Yeah, because the consequence of that is what? Now, that's really important too. Not doing what you, you abandon what you want when somebody has a conflict with what you want. Oh, okay, it's all right. I just do what you say, whatever. I don't matter. It's fine. I can go along. You know, that kind of stuff is all codependent speak in the brain. Like, I can go along. I can be the better one. I can make it good. Um, it's all on me. But I didn't want to do that. And I felt that. And I know that. And shutting down. I just really noticed, you know... Um, that when anger ticks up in somebody that's not afraid of externalizing and codependency is around, like in somebody that has more codependent coping mechanisms, that shutting down is definitely something that happens to, again, you know, don't, they, when emotions get too high, now codependency is not functioning. Now you've gone into fight or flight. Now your main meta schema for how to deal with uh, the world is no longer working. So you can literally go fight, fight, or freeze and be done. Like you are done. Um, so that is that shutting down function. And then that what's unfortunate is that person can continue to escalate. And you really need to be able to speak to your feelings and go, you got to stop talking to me this way. I'm exiting this conversation. So they don't just keep on, you know, creating. Because by the way, codependent folks, is we, and I can include myself, become containers for people's aggression. When we shut down, we're like a garbage can. And they're just dumping it in. We're like sponges. And what happens is we fill up with negative energy and have to go implode either on ourselves and feel depressed or on others, or we take it out on our lives somehow or drink it away, but it, there is a consequence for going into fight, flight, or freeze, really, um, when uh, conflict situations come up and you cannot walk away. Yes, learning to set, keep real close eye on your internal temperatures, not on theirs. When you get to that point where you're like, yeah, this is gonna, send me out the roof or I'm going to start to shut down. I got to go. So you're, I see what you, let me see. I think best to live um, them not articulate. When you get into a new relationship, are you supposed to physically tell the person your boundaries? This is a great question on this, on this point. Struggling to set clear boundaries and the way we were just talking about it um, is not uh, a statement of obviously like a boundary violation, like don't grab me or don't touch me or you know some sort of physical. We're talking about we're letting people into our minds and into our emotional space without uh, any clear understanding that it, that's happening. So... Actually, what you have to do first is delineate clear boundaries within yourself. Who am I? What are my values? Where are the lines that I have within? Where do I delineate value? And when I did that post last night about, and we can even say, are my good guy values really good for me? When I let it slide or fill in the blank for people, when, when I'm trying to be the good person is that an internal erasing of boundaries? Yes. 
because if there if you really paid attention to what was happening there you wouldn't have to anytime we have to use a defense in order to get through a conversation <laughs> uh, you know what we're doing is we're bringing on uh, something to block us from our feeling and really it could have been a question that you wanted to ask it could have been a whole bunch of different things but you're not letting yourself do it so maybe fear of rejection, all that. I would say, unless there is something very specific about boundaries like, I really don't want to be like huge, like a communication boundary. I'm not interested in a ton of texting, but I am interested in, um, a, you know, maybe a couple of exchanges in the day, but really I'm a phone person. I really don't like to do the text thing. Like if you have things that you like, that you want to see in the relationship, communicate them. Don't let the other person set the stage just because they're accepting you, they like you and all these kinds of things. This is one of the things that I, um, I, I wanna talk about in this next two. You sacrifice your wants to, uh, needs to appease others and you're loyal to a fault. What I find in codependent relationships, a lot of times there was a partner that had a lot of shame uh, that the other person was okay with what they had been through. They So they were accepting of them. Doesn't mean the other person was right for them or the other person was communicating effectively or the other person was really respecting them, but they accepted them. And because of this acceptance, an idealization process in the beginning, the codependent person just was like, okay, I'll appease you and I will be loyal to you because, well, I feel so self-rejected. I feel rejected for everything I've gone through. I'm, I'm the rejected one. I own now because you've accepted me, that is my wish come true. So, but then it's a nightmare because you get trapped. Uh, quote unquote, that's what it feels like in these situations. Thank you for the follow, by the way. So the, um, so what I want to know is if that makes sense to you, beer boy, the, and see if, you know, because I just, I don't think that boundaries to me is like, they need to be experienced. Um, you can set up a couple of guidelines, but I don't really call those boundaries of like, I'm not looking for a long-term relationship. I am, you know, this or that. So I, I think, yeah, it, it's more like in the moment, the codependent person needs to really experience, oh, this defense is coming on, or oh, I'm starting to feel nervous, or oh, I don't like that. Ooh, ooh. you know, the, intu the intuitive nudge, the negative feeling needs to come to the surface and it needs to be thought about not defended against, thought about, and then expressed effectively at an appropriate time. <clears throat> and I would say very soon after it's being felt, if you add up, you know, basically <laughs> uh, 20 repressed feelings of the day, it's, if something kind of catches you off guard, you might, you might just implode. <laughs> So that again is one of the things that a codependent uh, definitely has a tendency of doing. Um, so, and as I, as I go ahead and I'm about to wrap up in three minutes and we can go through more of these again, but um, I think I want to end with a one that is really important. And thank you for the likes. Definitely tap, double tap the screen if you like this and that will um, send it out there. But you have low self-esteem and self-worth. Now, remember, and I think at some point I'm gonna put, um, thank you, I think you if I put a diagram together, but Remember that child that we talked about in the beginning with shame at two years old, being told no, this little raw block of emotions being chiseled away at, and those defenses set up around, thank you, where all those likes is that you end up with all these defenses around something that you're protecting. And what's really unfortunate when we 
do that thing they say in, uh, that you do in therapy, you peel back the layers. It's like you're a onion. When we get to the core, we see what we're protecting is not nourished. It's like we've been nourishing the role aspect of our life or the professional or the role meaning like mother, father, sister, friend. I'm, I'm a role, I'm, I'm, a, I'm some way of being professionally, academically, sports, whatever it is externally. We have nurtured that and we have reinforced our defenses. And when we get through all of it, we see what we're protecting is low self-worth. Do you see how ironic this is? Low self-esteem. Because none of this stuff has been able to penetrate, even though you might be excellent you know, at your job, an excellent partner. You might be doing a lot of different things. Like, like as I mean, a partner, I'm not my partner. I mean, like um, parent even, like really dedicated. You might get A's in every aspect of your life, but when it comes to your self-worth, what we've found is like, it's nothing. It's been totally eroded. It's like no sun is getting to it. Not even the sun that you're generating in your own life for others. So I really want you to pay attention to this part because we need to start to work on this part of ourselves, loving ourselves and starting to shine the light on that seed, on that part of us that we have said, okay, no, no, nobody gets to shine the light. You're not safe. <laughs> and we had to do that to survive our situation. But <clears throat> we're in charge of being the sun now. So we definitely need to focus on self-love, self-worth, self-esteem, alongside with all of these other types of, all of these other types of things that we're talking about. Yes, I know, and you were the one who asked about that, so I, um, I think that's why I'm reinforcing that now. I hope that you got the book, um, oh gosh, that was recommended um, by the Hay House. Um, I really have low self. I try and hypnotherapy. I good. I love that. I love that hypnotherapy. Um, mirror work. That's it. Um, is is that there is something really powerful about dedicating a practice to yourself to a practice of mirror work, um, and then taking that and little wins throughout the day. When you actually show up for things that you said you wanted to do and you didn't back down and you did it all the way, patting yourself on the back. So it's so important. It's so important. Um, and yes, oh, and so I'm going to close up, but I will tell you this. Everyone on this podcast, or not on this podcast today, um, oh, Mirror Work, hey, how you doing? That is by Louise Hayes. Uh, godmother of self-help, earth angel, um, actress. Um, I love what uh, um, Isaac is, is suggesting. So as you're reading that, I'm going to tell you the, I have, um, the emotional warrior community membership is a hundred percent something that I've built from scratch where I'll be doing master classes live once a month, the first day a week of the month. And then second and third week of the month, I'm going to do a live coaching course where I can actually bring you on screen with me and we can do a hot seat type of talk where I can, you can ask me what it is that, or tell me about your issue. We can answer it in front of everybody. And everybody there is, is totally open to working on all things codependent and emotional development and healing. So really, really important. So if you check my bio out, this is why I'm doing this. I love TikTok and I want to give you this information. But remember, there's no quick fix. There's a process of understanding. And I'm trying to do this for more than one person at a time. So not therapy, but more education and more techniques, even like Isaac's talking about. So one of the things that I have over there is um, guided meditations. Um, yes, guided meditations 
with affirmations at the end. So 15 minutes relaxation for about 10 and then five minutes of affirmations that are just for people that are working on codependent issues. So lots of cool stuff over there. I would, I would definitely sign up. And yes, I have a podcast. The first episode is out now on Spotify. Um, it's called Emotional Warrior Radio because that's what I think we all are as emotional warriors. Um, so yeah, and, and so the, go to the link in my bio and you can like, that'll take you to a page where I, I believe the podcast link is there. I think that has been done. So I think you could go to my page and see and get podcast link. You can also check out what's in the membership and um, sign up because it started yesterday and I can't wait to see you all over there too. Um, I will see, uh, tonight I'm gonna do um, a live with, um, on IG on um, codependency and how it shows up uh, in certain relationships, but with a relationship coach. So she's pretty cool and um, she knows a lot about this. So I think just dive into the relationship part, not necessarily the emotional, personal part. So thank you all so much for showing up. Likes, follows, you're awesome. And I'm really excited to, now that we've, I've got this launched, that we will be building this community together because I know that we can grow out of codependency. It just takes understanding. So I'll see you tomorrow at the same time. Have a wonderful day. And I'll see you in my feed as well. Bye.